So, uh, Zach, give us some details. You got the benefit coming up here in Philly on, on Friday. Tell us what that's all about. I mean, obviously, Philadelphia has meant so much to us over the years. Um, and we really came up with the House of Hope concept years ago um, when we were still playing there, obviously. Um, and we're finally at the finish line uh, of this project. And we can see the end, end zone. We're kind of at that two-minute drill in the fourth quarter trying to win the game. Um, and so this benefit is just an opportunity for us to really um, be surrounded with our community back in Philly again, put on a great show um, with a couple amazing artists. Obviously, uh, uh, Matt Quinn from Mount Joy is going to be there. He's a stud. So we're so excited to be able to do this with him. Um, and it's something that we're really looking forward to. Yeah, for those that don't know uh, what House of Hope is, can, can you explain, like, who benefits from that? I mean, obviously, um, hopefully a lot of people, a lot of kids in particular. Um, we started the House of Hope concept years ago of uh, wanting to be a safe place for kids after school. You know, after school, Julie and I had the opportunity to play sports um, from 3 to 7 o'clock. My mom always made sure that me and my brothers were busy during that time. Um, but a lot of people don't play sports and they, they need other things to do. And um, so we started this House of Hope years ago, um, and it is truly has been so awesome to be able to work with so many amazing people. Uh, Pastor Rob Whitmire is kind of the lead behind the every day. Um, he has a he has a nonprofit called Timoteo Organization. Um, they do amazing work through flag football, through ministry. Um, we partnered with an organization called small things. That's going to be the lead for our kitchen, um, at the house of hope. So it's really, it's kind of a Wi-Fi cafe. There's a, there's a commercial kitchen there. There's going to be tutoring. There's going to be rooms for people to rent out or, um, kind of just use to use as a space that they can, that the community can claim as one of their own. And obviously, um, we don't know what we don't know for so long and but we've partnered and we've had so many amazing people join this project that have really been everything um they're in the community each and every day and so we've just been able to really amplify their voices and it's culminated in this project why is it so important for you and for julie to stay connected to philadelphia with your foundation like what is it about this city that that keeps you locked in I mean, everyone knows how I felt playing there, how Julie felt living there when we were playing there for nine years, essentially. And we were there for nine years. And uh, we, we came there when we were 22 years old, um, didn't know what we didn't know. We were just bright eyed and bushy tailed <laughs> per se. Um, but I think immediately we, we fell in love with the city, um, not just the city, but really the people there. Uh, how much we appreciated the support that we felt, not only on Sundays, but really each and every day of the week. Um, and so when we were playing there, we, we, we wanted to do something big for the, as, as a gift back to the city. And we didn't know exactly what that was going to look like. Um, but over the years, especially during the time of COVID, um, we kind of came up with this concept uh, with Rob Whitmire and some other people. Um, and Acme has done amazing things. And they donated the commercial kitchen. And so we've just been able to bring this whole thing together as a token of our appreciation to the city. And just to kind of say, hey, thank you for everything that you guys have given us. You've given us more than we could have ever given you. Um, and so this is just a little thing that we, we love Philadelphia and hopefully it's just something that continues to grow. Sounds like it's going to be an awesome event. So we'll post up the uh, information on our website. But I wanted to ask you about um, one of your old teammates, Fletcher Cox just uh, announcing yesterday officially that he's he's hanging them up. Um, what are some of your best memories of, of playing with Fletch? And what do you think he meant to the city? Yeah, I mean, Fletch, obviously, uh, he's very soft spoken kind of to the outside world. He's, he's not a guy that gets a ton of um, he's not Jason in the sense that everyone knows Jason Kelsey. Everyone knows everything he does. Um, he has that kind of uh, huge personality per se, whereas Fletch was just as important to the team in the locker room as Kels was. Um, he was a guy that was a rock star on that defense for so many years. Um, one of the best Philadelphia Eagles ever to play the game. Um, he was drafted a year older, a year before me in Philly. So we spent nine years together and he was almost a big brother to me um, in that regard. He was the guy that was showing 
showing everyone how how you approach the game in Philly, um, what it meant like to be just a monster in every aspect. He was a truly generational player. Um, besides Aaron Donald, he was probably the best D lineman in the past decade. Uh, and so he's 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 one of the all time greats. I don't know if anyone will wear ninety one again for that organization. Um, but he's one of my best friends that I've had in this, this league. And we actually talked for a while last night after his uh, retirement ceremony. What, what did he have to say? He seemed like he was on the verge of tears. He didn't quite get there. I mean, he, he's at peace with the decision, obviously. I, I kind of knew that last year was going to be his last year. Um, we talked about it before the season started. So I kind of knew that it was going to be his last one. Um, and obviously, I think he wished it ended differently. But at the end of the day, he had such an amazing run there that the last few few games of the season or the last season is just going to be another thing that he's going to look back and enjoy on an amazing career because he was such a monster for such a long time. And I'm so happy that he's walking away on his terms because he can also still play just like Jason. They both could still play football for much longer if they wanted to. Um, but they're at peace with the decision that they've made. Yeah, and with, with Jason – saying goodbye and Fletch as well. There's only a handful of you guys left from that uh, Super Bowl winning team here in, in Philly. When you think back to that, uh, how, how often do you think back to those days? And what do you miss about, you know, that that team, that that brotherhood, that camaraderie in, in particular? Yeah, I mean, um, like you said, it, it's, it's been a while, obviously. Um, I've been searching and finding trying to find a way to win another one over the past years um you kind of experience it once and it almost becomes like i need more of this um and you just realize how hard it is um because up until that point you understand it's hard but you never really view it as being uh, until you have that success you don't view it as really being readily attainable Uh, obviously every team goes out every season with the goal of that um, but you don't realize how hard it is to go out there and, and win it until you actually do it. Um, and I'm going into my 12th year and it's only happened one time. So ever since that moment, I've kind of been longing for another one. Hopefully it will happen again. I'm doing everything I can each and every day to make it happen again. Um, but I think that's the thing that you look back and just how good we were, obviously, and how close we were as a team is something that we haven't really, I haven't really been a part of since. Um, Obviously, you know, you're in Washington right now, but I think it's pretty interesting, like how the NFL is expanding internationally speaking. So the Eagles are going to play the Packers in Brazil. Um, how cool is it to, to be a part of, of things like that? Because I think you played you played overseas once, right? You guys played. in Did you play in London that year? Yeah. Yeah. yeah what, what is that like from I mean, it's, it's, perspective it's, it's, going overseas yeah, to play? I loved going to London. Um, it was an amazing trip. A lot of people think it's kind of hard because your, your routine is thrown off a little bit. Um, but just being in a new country for the three days before we got there, and then Doug Peterson actually let us stay the following week to kind of explore the city oh, cool. um, and stay there if we wanted because we got to buy the following yeah. week. Um, and so Julie and I were able to stay out there and really take in London. And so I truly enjoyed it. Uh, obviously, we won the game, which helps. But the, it's, it's so unique because – it's almost like a Super Bowl feel where it's very corporate in the sense you don't have 70,000 Eagles or Commanders fans screaming. Uh, it's very kind of subdued almost where they're kind of just cheering for a good game. <laughs> um, and especially in London, and I'm sure it's going to be the same way in Brazil, they, they love the field goals and they love the punts and they love the special teams just from the soccer perspective and how much um, those – those that sport is kind of ingrained in their culture um but i i I definitely loved playing in that international game have you thought about what it's going to be like coming back to to philly and the ovation and all that (laughs) i don't know i mean i hope i get an ovation but i honestly don't know what to expect obviously everyone knows how i feel um i've seen some former players come back and get not the ovation Uh, I, i would say uh, maybe a different kind of ovation, but everyone knows how I, I feel about the city. Um, and so hopefully it's an awesome day um, for me and for the fans. And uh, I haven't really put too much thought in it. I'm sure the, the week of I'll get asked much more about it and I'll be able to give a much better answer. Uh, but right now I haven't thought too in depth about it, even though I've been asked more about it leading up to this event in Philly for the foundation event on Friday night. Uh, but I haven't thought too much about it. Uh, I, I guess I'll leave you with this. You guys are expecting your, your second child. That, is that right? 
Yep. C- congratulations on that. H- how has it changed for you? You know, when you come in, you mentioned you came here when you were 22, 23 years old as, a, as basically a kid. Now you have your own with, with a second one on the way. How does that change your perspective as, as an NFL player having a family like that? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, being a dad is awesome, first of all. Um, we have so much fun with our little boy. He's running around. He's talking. He under, he's starting to learn more and more. He's starting to talk more and more. Um, so it's definitely been a blessing, um, not only for myself, obviously, but to also see Julie become such an amazing mother as well. It's been it's been fun to kind of enter that next season of life, per se. Um, and obviously, in sports, you're so so reflective on the day because you have instant results you know how well you did immediately um, which isn't the case for a lot of things and you oftentimes think about it too much Um, but having a family at home immediately when you open the door he doesn't know how I played that day he doesn't know um, if I had a great game or a terrible game he just knows me as dad Uh, and so the moment you walk in the door, you kind of drop everything, um, even though it's not always as easy as it may to do to to drop it right away as it should be. Um, but I think that's something that we've definitely tried to work on is when we're home with him, we're present. Um, it's not just in football. It really is in life. You know, when you're working a job, whether it be athletics or whether it be any other type of job, you want to be present for your kids. And obviously, um, that, that's been our goal and it's been fun and it's been amazing. And um yeah, number two on the way soon. It's awesome. H- how old is he now? He's a little over a year and a half. Um, okay, cool. So he's uh, he's a big boy, obviously. Um, I don't know about obviously, but he's a big boy. <laughs> he's a lot of fun. Um, and he's starting to get a little bit more personality. And I definitely miss being apart from him right now. It's definitely tough. Well, Zach, I appreciate the time, my friend. Good luck uh, th- this weekend. It's going to be a-, a hell of an event. So thank you again.